Poirot has chosen a scene that could have been easily witnessed along the outskirts of Paris. A stonecutter is shown swinging his mallet, alongside a horse-drawn cart already full of hewn rock. As the horses turn to carry the wagon's heavy load of stones, the viewer might speculate that their destination is Paris, which had recently suffered from the turmoil of uprisings against the state. In the 1860s, Corot began making photographs, a practice that honed the artist's eye for creating the nuances of tonal values. Constant Dudio, fellow artist and close friend to Corot, encouraged him to pursue cliché air, a printmaking technique that combines etching techniques with photosensitive plates. Cliché air could be done quickly and perhaps appeal to Corot because it offered him a means of translating his atmospheric effects of landscape into a graphic medium. Stone skimming is probably the most competitive sport in the world. But that's because it's not a sport. What makes it respectable? That's the question. You've got to judge a whole arm coming through, catch the right angle with the right amount of power on it. This most unlikely looking thing. <laughs> Some definitely take it a bit too seriously. <laughs> but no one was into curling until about 10 years ago when suddenly we found out we were the best in the world at it. Skimming is starting to prove that humans can throw things further than javelins, further than hammers and further than discus. I have aspirations of it being in the Olympics or the Commonwealth Games at some point. Someone's going to get 100 skips eventually. The wrist angles all have to be adjusted. Reality has to be bloody adjusted. You have to have rivalries. Hello, Dougie. Oh, right on. And you got to be competitive and psychologically tough. Because that's the problem with our stone skimmers. There's a stone. There's water. Got to do it. Pivotal figure in landscape painting, Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot was an influential and prolific artist. He focused on two types of landscapes, historical landscapes, containing ancient and mythological creatures, and realistic landscapes, mostly of northern Europe, with faithful renditions of flora and fauna, often mixing the two genres together. Yeah. 